Varyon is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The producers of the Bachelor franchise have faced criticism over the years for allegedly meddling too much in the different plot lines of the show. A certain amount of producer participation is necessary for reality television. But producers can overdo it, which could harm the program and the brand. There have been nine seasons of Bachelor in Paradise, 28 seasons of The Bachelor, 21 seasons of The Bachelorette, and numerous seasons of other franchise series, such as The Golden Bachelor and The Golden Bachelorette, since the franchise is beginning. Producers have come under fire for allegedly prioritizing the show over the requirements of its competitors with each new season. Many believe it is unjust for producers to force storylines or relationships that wouldn't have developed naturally. The Bachelor franchise's viewers legitimately want to witness compelling plots involving intriguing people falling in love. But they also want natural narratives. Nobody wants to believe that the romantic relationships they are witnessing blossom are the result of all-powerful producers manipulating the candidates' outcomes. Fans, on the other hand, ought to make an effort to comprehend that the producers are not paid matchmakers seeking to establish committed partnerships. Reviving an enjoyable show is their profession. They are in the entertainment industry. Since the start of the franchise a few years ago, there have been several instances where producers. Some of the conflict in the Bachelor franchise episodes might seem forced, despite the fact that they are frequently really entertaining. Kelsey Anderson's late game letter to Joey Graziere on season 28 of The Bachelor served as one recent example. Kelsey wrote to Joey after their overnight date, stating that they needed to chat. Joey went crazy. He worried nervously all season long that he may fall in love with someone who didn't want him back. And Joey immediately assumed that Kelsey had sent the letter to express her desire to depart. Fearing that Kelsey was going to self-eliminate from the game, Joey headed to her hotel room. Kelsey informed him she sent the letter because she missed him when they finally had a chance to sit down. Joey was relieved, and it appeared as though the filmmakers had staged the scene to make Joey feel uneasy. Ultimately, Kelsey received Joey's last rose, and the two became engaged. It frequently feels like a candidate is simply on the program getting ready for the next one, because the Bachelor franchise stars frequently come from other franchise shows. One recent example is Mark Anderson, who is 58 years old. During the hometown episode of The Bachelor season 28, Mark made his franchise diva when his daughter, Kelsey, brought Joey home to meet her father and their family. As soon as possible, fans began demanding that Mark be the next Golden Bachelor. Instead, when he was chosen to compete on season one of The Golden Bachelorette, it was assumed that he was simply there to compete for the title of The Golden Bachelor. The fan theory was only strengthened when Mark was sent home early. Whether Mark will be the second male star in the Bachelor spinoff is still up in the air. Emotionally influencing the candidates is another way that producers on the Bachelor franchise shows can become overly engaged. People must realize that the producers of any show have complete control over the cast. Their phones are confiscated, they are cut off from friends and relatives and they are unable to access the outside world, or even the internet. Consider the letter that Kelsey wrote to Joey, which was previously stated. Instead of saying, I miss you, the note said, we need to chat. The phrase, we need to talk, is among the most frightening in the English language, as everyone is aware, especially when your significant other uses it. The producers may have encouraged Kelsey to use the scarier language, or she may have just sat down and composed the most inflammatory thing she could think of. Relationships on The Bachelor that turn out to be fake might also result from blatant production participation. Since these relationships are wholly produced as entertainment products, they have little hope in the real world. 
The most recent example that immediately comes to me is the foolish union of Theresa Nist, 70, and Jerry Turner, 72, on season one of the Rose at the Bachelor. end of season one of The Golden Bachelor, and they were married in a grandiose ceremony a few weeks later. It became evident that the relationship was a front when the marriage disintegrated three months later. The wedding appeared to be a total ratings grab because of the divorce. It hurt the brand, regardless of whether it was caused by producers or developed naturally. Contestants and even the lead may lose faith in the producers as a result of their excessive engagement, which is another significant way that it harms the franchise. Trust is crucial because co-stars depend on the show's producers for everything throughout production. The producers with whom they are collaborating must give participants the impression that they are on their side. Contestants may make unnatural behavioral changes if they begin to believe that the producers are unreliable. The entire season might be ruined if leads have mistrust for their producers. The producers of the Bachelor series must realize that while their role is to create an engaging narrative, they must avoid over-influencing the plot. People must be convinced that the stories they are being presented are accurate since no one enjoys being missled. Producers of the Bachelor franchise should start by reducing the number of dubious contestants if they wish to produce ever better episodes. One excellent example of supper casting is the first season of The Golden Bachelorette, which is presently airing. Two distinct males with recent restraining order histories were cast in the production. One concerned Gil Ramirez, a California educator who was 60 years old. About four months ago, Gil's ex-girlfriend accused him of stalking and applied for a restraining order against him, but she eventually withdrew her accusations, according to People. According to People, Joan had a soft spot for Guy Gansard, 66, since they first met during season one of The Golden Bachelorette. However, in October 2021, Guy's ex-wife, Heidi O'Gara, requested a temporary protective order. A month later, the injunction was revoked, but her charges are unsettling. She claims that her ex-husband motioned like he was going to shoot me with his hand fashioned like a pistol, was irid, and threatened her. Even if the lawsuits were eventually dropped, the producers should never have allowed anyone who has ever been under a restraining order to appear on the show. Bachelor Nation fans are a distinct species, despite the fact that people are generally highly jaded about love stories these days. Many of them find inspiration in the relationships formed on the show, even if many watch it solely for enjoyment. With numerous long-term marriages under its belt, the series has a very impressive track record. After 20 years of marriage and two kids together, Trista Wren and Ryan Sutter, the first couple to meet on season one of The Bachelorette, are still together. Viewers will eventually stop watching The Bachelor if they don't think genuine love is achievable. In the end, they must maintain their belief that genuine love may be found on the program, even when the drama between competitors may temporarily stop the bleeding. The producers of The Bachelor ought to realize that they don't have to put in as much effort. There will be drama if 30 or so attractive ladies are placed in a mansion and forced to V for one man. Things will be more intriguing if they are organic, so there's no reason to get too involved. Because of their sophistication, the audience is able to quickly identify authenticity. Additionally, they are able to detect created, inflated or fraudulent content. Producers of the Bachelor franchise should take a back seat and allow the show develop naturally, even though part of it is required when creating a reality television program. Otherwise, candidates would just sit around starring at one another. The entertainment will take care of itself if the proper people are cast and the right dates are arranged. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.